Morning, YouTube, friends and family. Hey, it's Thursday. Is it Thursday? I think it's Thursday. Pretty sure about that one. I, you know, I did not plan this week very well. Um, I, as I was looking at my schedule about a month ago, I thought that this week would be filled with jobs that I've, I've actually already completed. So as a result, I don't have anywhere to go again today. <laughs> Otherwise, today is another beautiful, crisp and cold, but clear day in Maine that I have off. So I'm gonna take it. Thanks for coming with me. One of my subscribers, Beth Richmond, thank you, uh, tipped me off and said that there was a local radio station that had posted on their Facebook feed one of my vlogs about what to do on a rainy day in Maine. I was reading the description, you know, of that post, and I thought it interesting that the post described Curry Caputo as a local YouTuber. And it sort of struck me. I had never really thought of myself as a YouTuber, you know? I, I just know that there's like this whole world of, of YouTubers out there and you know, they're using YouTube all the time. And then I, I guess I just realized that I'm a YouTuber now. So I, it was interesting, I looked it up, you know, YouTuber, uh, define YouTube, Google search. Well, two major definitions came back. One who produces and uploads content basically for the YouTube platform, to, to paraphrase. Uh, and the other was more of the urban, uh, the urban Dictionary, which said a YouTuber is anyone who spends a lot of time watching YouTube videos or on YouTube. The definition of a YouTuber just being somebody who spends time watching YouTube really is gone. It seems like now YouTuber means somebody a range of somebody like me, you know, down here with 150 views, 200 views per video, all the way up to somebody like, you know, Casey getting 2 million views per video. We're all YouTubers and I think that that's an interesting thing because uh, regardless of our economic, uh, our philosophic, our personal beliefs, you know, we're all YouTubers together. It's kind of cool. I keep uploading because people keep watching, so it's sort of like this feedback loop, right? I upload, you watch, you watch, so I upload, so you watch, so I upload. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. This, this, this is an old apple tree that just grew up here, maybe as much as. 50 or 60 years old. Uh, there's a lot of dead wood on it though. Apple wood has a lot, it's very high BTU wood. So it's dead, it's dry. It's right on the trail that we have here. So it's a great spot to take some firewood. So it's a day off, but I still wanna to try to make hay while the sun shines, right? As they say.
dad always um, had me avoid chainsaws because he knew that they were dangerous and rightly so. Maybe he had an accident once with them. Anyway, he was he was quite protective and it's not a wrong thing, but I did um, eventually learn how to use a chainsaw from my buddy Damon. And then I, when I worked for the U.S. Forest Service, I took a chainsaw safety class because everybody is required to. Um, and I learned a lot of tips from that as well. And there's one thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about today, and that is kickback. The one thing that you have to be conscious of all the time is, um, is about kickback. Now, kickback, kickback occurs when you touch, imagine a one quarter piece of pie that goes straight out to the tip of the blade and straight up from that sprocket point. That little zone of blade there is, is the danger zone. That's the kickback zone. If you hit that to any piece of wood, and if you're not prepared for that, it can throw you off balance. It can cause the saw to hit you. Um, and in the very least, it is sort of, you know, just alarming when it happens. So that, that's like number one, just, you know, keep the kickback clear of wood. And that means when you're cutting, you're cutting in like this. Or you're cutting underneath and getting the whole blade underneath. As opposed to trying to dive into the wood, doing something like this is very... Uh, dangerous. Is it possible? Sure, if you have a steady hand and you can control exactly where in that kickback zone you're, 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 you're contacting wood, but uh, generally speaking, don't touch that part initially to the wood and you'll be fine. Kickback. fence. I know it looks like this is wicked tall. Man, it is. It's over eight feet. Um, but man, every year I grow peas, I wish my fence was taller because they will just grow as basically as tall as the fence is. And I want as many peas as I can get. I'm going to make this fence tall. Woo! <laughs> so the thing can carry more than just one spare battery. This fits like perfectly here. But when you close it down, these two little tabs here hit the battery. So I'm done with it. I've been frustrated with this for long enough. F 
afternoon, YouTube, friends and family. Hey, I'm on my way to pick up my firstborn and to go play some tennis with him. He, I don't know, he may not have had even a sanctioned practice today. I think that he was just hitting the ball with his buddies after school. And I asked him if he could carve out a little time with me to do the same, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm really excited. Well, I, I think I still got it. I can hold my own against, you know, a couple 16 year olds who've never played before. <laughs> Actually, they're quite good for, the, for it being their first year. 